Hello and welcome again to the Centre for Computing History. I'm Adrian and this is Phil. Evening. And we're looking at a PC today. It's not just any PC, this is the Amstrad Mega PC 386SX. Uh, it looks like a rather boring beige computer running DOS. It certainly does. And it is. And a boring Amstrad one at that. Amstrad did a lot of boring PCs, but he made a lot of money doing it. He did, yes. As a child, we all had games consoles, and our game console was Sega Mega Drive. Uh, US folks may know it as a Genesis, and we loved it. Yeah, so uh, it is a standard PC. It's also a Mega Drive, two in one. Hence the name, the Mega PC. The clue is in the name. And as a child, we used to flip through the gaming magazines and always be an ad at the back for the Mega PC, and we drooled over it. Never knew anyone who had one. It turns out it's actually a little bit rubbish, and um, we'll get on to that in a minute. It's also quite rare these days, isn't it? Uh, not around here. Uh, this is actually on display almost all the time at the Centre for Computing History, so if you're into this sort of thing, do drop by if you're in or around Cambridge. But yeah, it's got this little flap on the front. On, on the left, you've got your floppy drive there, and if you slide it to the right, it will do a little click, and the Mega Drive on the left will fire up. Uh, the PC does keep running when you do that. So if you've got your business thing running in the background, that'll be right there when you switch back. If we do, uh, do that, the video switches over. We can now plug in a specially branded controller. Licensed by Sega. Oh no, this is, this is all an official product. This is uh, fully on the up, as it were. Yeah, take that. Okay, yeah. And let's go with the, I think this was the pack-in cartridge. Mega Game 6 or something like that. Goes in like that. Uh, you'd have to worry about plugging it in while the machine is turned on. There's a little switch under here that keeps the power to the Mega Drive cut until the cartridge is all the way in. And there we go. So, is the Mega Drive circuitry built into the PC? No. Uh, it was marketed as a two-in-one, and it really is two machines bolted together. If we open this up, which we might do later, depending. Let's turn that down. Uh, you see the Mega Drive is on the left here as an ISA expansion card. It's very much a separate, separate piece of equipment. It only draws power from the bus. And I believe that it's got a Yamaha chip on there, which the PC can access. It gives it ad-lib compatible sound. Uh, video goes out the back, um, standard VGA. But when it's in Mega Drive mode, it switches down to 15 kilohertz. So a regular monitor will not work in Mega Drive mode. It has to be this special Amstrad one, which is dual sync. Right, it's so... Let's have a go at something here. So what yep. else could we play but Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, it has to be. It's a classic. Oh, beautiful, beautiful 8-bit sound. Now I take it it doesn't scale the graphics up or do anything in particular, it is? No, this is exactly as it would have been coming out um, as a standard Mega Drive if you had an RGB cable rather than RF. It does have this slight warping effect on the edges. I don't know if the camera catches that very well, but as it scrolls, it's almost as if... Oh, it's like a wraparound effect, isn't it? Yeah, it's as if it's being projected onto a sphere. It's a little bit strange. And also, um, people from across the pond in America might note that these... It sounds very, very slow. It sounds hideously slow. And the reason, of course, is it's a PAL machine. Different video standard in the UK. And as a result, unless the developer took special care, the games ran about... 17.5% 17 17. slower. He knows. So... Sonic yeah. was not one where they... You weren't playing that. That was a demo. That was a demo. I thought yeah. you were doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> no, now we'll do terribly. So, uh, quite painfully slow, in fact. Here's, uh, when we first turned it on, we thought, that's, that's slower than a regular UK Mega Drive. Uh, but we fired another one up next to it, and no, they're exactly the same. We're just used to running uh, NTSC systems. You've got to have the game as it's designed, you know? None of slow down nonsense. So yeah, um, now everyone online also says there is a connector on here for plugging in the Mega CD, uh, or the Sega CD, again, if you're in the US. I haven't actually found one. I, I'm not even sure it exists, to be honest. Who knows? Uh, if, they also released a second version, because when it was released, a 386 was not exactly top-end hardware. Even at the time, it was a little bit underpowered. They released a 486 model later, and they're even more rare. I've not seen one personally. Didn't sell particularly well. This was when low-end Pentiums were about coming out, I think. So you're going to show us your Sega skills now? My mad Sonic skills. 
I was more a Nintendo person myself. I had nothing but Sega. But I think I skipped straight from the Mega Drive to the Wii. The B button on this does not work particularly well. There we go. No, it's not. That's probably with all these old controllers. They're uh, slowly dying. But aren't we all? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, should we explain here who really Amstrad are? Of course, the company name stands for it's an abbreviation of Alan Michael Sugar Trading. Yep, he's a fairly well-known businessman. He got his start famously on a market stall. Uh, Selling car aerials, I believe. Yep, he's done a whole load of cheap computers. He got in very early on that market. First the CPC range and... He even did a games console too. He did do a games console, which we might take a look at one day. I think everyone was getting in on the games console business in the 80s and 90s. Of course, the only benefit I can see to playing on this PC is that actually you're not getting the borders at the top and the bottom that you would normally get no, on a power machine. You, you can you just about see the background up there. And of course, it is, it's an RGB signal, not RF. So, it, so yes. if you like that sort of thing, that's quite a nice quality upgrade. I really find that it, it's very effect, very distracting, actually. It's like playing on a cylinder. It's uh, very, very strange indeed. That's what about if we put it into PC mode now? Yep, we do it into PC mode. There now, you normally you wouldn't pull a cartridge out of a console. No, this one on. automatically puts the Mega Drive into reset as soon as the cartridge starts to come out before any of the pins disconnect. We're actually okay here. Uh, don't try that on a regular console. There you go, the PC was sitting there all along waiting. Uh, we did try switching over while we were playing a game that had sound coming out, and it did seem to cut out the PC sound while the Mega Drive fired up. What have we got that can run in PC mode? Uh, we could, let's see, a load of games on here. EGA Roids? No, no, that doesn't sound very interesting, does it? Let's see, more games, Kong. I don't know who C Kong is. Let's find out. <sighs> it's going to be some Donkey Kong japery, I expect, isn't it? Look. Champ Software, uh, shareware version. Previous owners did not pay for their that's all fine. <laughs> Maybe they didn't enjoy it, who knows. Yesterday's arcade on today's PC. Ah, oh, it's a... It's, uh... it's surprisingly competent, Donkey Kong ripoff. That's quite classy actually, isn't it? He's definitely not using the uh, ad-lib sound though. Ooh. Oh, let's jump. Okay. I don't make it. I'm terrible. Oh. I'm terrible at this game. It's always here it gets me. Right, yeah. Oh, you're going to get there. Oh, hey, first skills. Time. Yeah. All that practice paid off. So, how much was one of these back in 1993? Far too much. Uh, £999.99, pence, which was a fair amount of dough even then for what you got. They reduced it to about £600 um, when they didn't sell too well. But it was a lot of cash for what you got. Um, three at six PC, one mega RAM, 40 meg hard drive, not great specs. So I think we're asking a bit too much. So you could probably have got a far superior PC for the same money. And a mega drive and still have change left for games. It always seems to be the way with the companies that try to integrate all the gaming and entertainment options into one box. Um, it always ends up being more expensive than buying the components separately. So this is a Totally separate Mega Drive in here from the PC unit. Yeah, totally separate. Um, we can take a look at it if you like. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? It was one moment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that. Right, Phil, you've opened up the Mega PC. What are we looking at? Right, on the right is standard PC. So power supply here, floppy drive, hard drive mounted below it. Motherboard at the bottom. Uh, slightly unusual is the PC speaker on the right here, but also there's a little angled circuit board, and that's actually the PS2 mouse and keyboard connectors. Uh, the mouse and keyboard actually attach under the bottom at an angle. Yeah, ST does that, yeah. A little bit unusual. Uh, on the left here is expansion bay. It's got a riser card, three 16-bit ISA slots, and the only card in there is the uh, Amstrad Mega Drive board. It's actually labelled Amstrad Games Processor PCB. It's an issue number five. Uh, you can see the cartridge goes in the front here. Underneath are the connectors for the joypad, uh, the reset button, volume control. And if we look, we actually see the Motorola 68000 chip there. That's the main CPU, RAM to the side. 
Uh, Xilog Z80 was the secondary CPU. Most games used it to do sound processing, or rather to drive the sound hardware. Uh, in Master System compatibility mode, that took over, and by happy coincidence was the same CPU the Master System used, so that all worked out. Its RAM is off to the side here somewhere. Big Sega chip in the middle is the video display processor, the VDP. And I don't know if you can see it, but its RAM is here, and that's actually slightly different. As well as being regular RAM, it's got a high-speed serial mode, so you can clock pixel data out really fast. All these capacitors and bits at the back here are implementing the AdLib sound card part. So there's a Yamaha chip just over here, which is used by the Mega Drive for its FM sound, uh, but it's also exposed to the PC as an AdLib sound card. Uh, it exposes uh, headphone audio out the back here, or speakers rather. 15-pin uh, analog joystick connector for the PC. And the only other connector is this little ribbon cable. That goes down to the motherboard where it goes into the video mixing circuitry. There's a little micro switch when you slide the front flat back and forward that tells it which video signal to use. And don't be fooled by the 15-pin VGA connector on the back. It's not a standard pinout. You can't use a regular VGA monitor with this. Or you can, but you'll only get PC video. Uh, normally the middle row of pins in a VGA connector are all grounds. Amstrad repurposed those to carry a stereo audio to the monitor, which has speakers built in, a signal to toggle it between VGA and 15 kilohertz modes, and a rather ambiguous pin labelled self-test in the manual, which I suspect the monitor just pulls low so the motherboard knows it's dealing with an Amstrad monitor and it doesn't try to drive any of these normally ground pins uh, with signals. So. From a PC perspective, is it at all expandable for future use? Uh, you've got two uh, expansion slots. I said earlier it was three. I'm actually wrong. There's no space underneath for the third one. You could put one extra card in. By this time, PCs generally had most of the useful bits built into the motherboard. So it's got an IDE controller. It's got a built-in floppy controller. Uh, the RAM is actually on SIMs, which are underneath the Mega Drive. Uh, Mega Drive board, very inconvenient because you've got to take all these screws out to get all the front panel uh, disconnected. It's as expandable as you really needed it to be for a 386. There wasn't much in the way of expansion hardware you might need. Maybe a sound card, but you've got the Mega Drive doing ad lib. So a thousand pounds really would have been very expensive for oh, it was far an too expandable much. PC. Far too much. The hardware was effectively very low end. The, it, the gimmick was the Mega Drive, and that's what, what most people would have bought it for. The PC was not particularly notable otherwise. Well, I have read somewhere that uh, a very large reason for its lack of success was an awful lot of people already had a Mega Drive. Yeah, it, it came out in 89, so this was what, 93? Four years of Mega Drive sales. That's a fairly saturated market, especially if your PC side is so woefully underpowered. It's a hard sell to anyone. Still damn cool though. Right, so that is the Mega PC then on display permanently here at the Centre for Computing History. Yep. And that... It's not as exciting as I always thought it would be as a child, but it's still a nice piece of kit. I think anybody that thought a PC could be combined with a console, that was exciting to a child. Yeah. But, uh, the reality is not quite the same, is it? So. Uh, oh, I've seen it fall down a hole. Okay. So, yeah, right, so that's thanks PC. for watching and... Uh, do remember to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you.